Megan Kober is the face behind the nutrition addiction, and she's the founder of Metabolism Makeover, which I highly recommend. We've had a lot of mutual patients that have come in for functional medicine and done Metabolism Makeover, and they're blown away when they take the principles that you've come up with and they simplify nutrition, how much better they feel. So first, Megan, tell us PHFF. What does that even mean? Where did it come from? PHFF is just an acronym that I came up with a few years ago um, when I started my practice because I was always telling clients that, you know, to a very simple way to look at their plate was to make sure there was protein, make sure there was some healthy fat and make sure there was some fiber on their plate. And so, you know, just an easy way to sort of remember PHFF and uh, it's what it what it means and what it kind of stands for um, as far as weight loss goes is those are the three things you always want to have on your plate to make sure that your body is in fat burning mode. So, you know, protein is is so good for our metabolism. I always recommend making sure, you know, you're getting protein, especially in the morning, like 20 to 30 grams. It's a great metabolism boost. Uh, protein supports our muscles and our muscles supports our metabolism. The more muscle mass we have, the higher our metabolic rate is. Um, healthy fat mm -hmm. is great because it turns off hunger hormones, keeps you full, keeps you satiated. And it also really helps slow down the insulin response. So when we're eating a lot of carbohydrates and sugar and things like that, we will release a lot of insulin and insulin is great. We all know we need insulin, right? If we don't have insulin, we're Dead. Yeah, <laughs> or dead. Well, we're dead. We're dead. If we don't have insulin, we're dead. Um, <laughs> so we need it. But when we're constantly releasing it, it is a storage hormone. So you know, we're we're going to be in sort of a storage mode where we're going to be storing fat, and the healthy fat and the fiber both really slow that down, so that you're not releasing so much insulin at once. Um, and then in addition, fiber also just keeps you full as well. So really, you know, in a nutshell, all three of them keep you full. All three of them keep your blood sugar steady. All three of them keep you sort of in that fat burning zone. So it's just a lot easier than counting calories and macros, I think, to just make sure you have all three on your plate. And is there a way, like if you're looking at a plate, like do you recommend like 25% of it to be a protein or if you're just like trying to not measure the protein, do you do it based on how the plate looks? So I, I don't usually, um, I like to look at it more to, you know, Make, looking at labels and, and and learning a little more about, you know, how much protein is in, let's say, you know, a chicken breast that's the size of your hand or a piece of fish or whatever. And just making sure that you're getting probably 20 grams of protein, you know, at least in a meal um, in, you know, in that chicken or fish. Or if you're a vegetarian, making sure that you have some proteins that are added. Um, those proteins are probably also going to, you know, have some carbohydrates or some fat in it as well. But just making sure you have some sort of protein on your plate. The fat, the way I measure it is I usually tell people, you know, people need anywhere from like one to three servings of fat at a meal, typically. Now what's a serving? Somewhere probably between like 10 and 12 grams. So what does that look like? Um, you know, about a tablespoon of oil or peanut butter, a half of an avocado, an ounce of cheese. These are ballpark, you know, they're not, again, I don't want you obsessing over the numbers, but if you just think of like what a normal serving is of, of a fat, that's pretty much what we're looking at. And then fiber, you know, it's mostly just vegetables, like fill, eat as many vegetables as you can. Yes. Well, and one of my favorite things is we used to tell, and I think about like six years ago when I started practicing functional medicine and I would tell my patients to like eat breakfast as soon as they wake up and eat small meals throughout the day to keep their appetite under control, to prevent binge eating. And now you look at the science and you're like, oh my gosh, it's like the exact opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Because other, you know, if you're eating all day, you're thinking about food all day. And yeah. I did the same thing. I, I'm, when I started my practice, I did the exact same thing. I'm like every three hours, like you know, set your alarm and <laughs> eat something. And, and it's not to say that it never worked. You know, I, I had plenty of success with a lot of clients, but what I found was people still, there was, you know, a food obsession. It was like, okay, well now i got to eat. Now i got to eat. Or, you know, okay, it's really hard for me to bring a lunch and two snacks to work with me every day. Yeah, it is. That's really hard. Um, so it's just not very practical. And it, it, I think it costs, I actually think it causes more overeating than eating this way. 
And I think it's so true that like that increase in insulin is going to make you hungry all day long. And so just letting it come down in between meals is huge. And one of the big things a lot of people want to know is, of course, they want to eat to feel good, but they also want to lose weight, which I know metabolism makeover is all about speeding up metabolism. So why is managing insulin really important for metabolism? Well, when you're releasing a lot of insulin, like I said, your body goes into a storage mode. So you're going to be burnt or you're going to be storing more fat just by default when you're constantly releasing insulin all day long. And I like to kind of give an example. So let's say you wake up in the morning and you eat a banana and you have like a, I don't know, a green juice or a fat free latte or, you know, something that has a lot of carbs in it. And that seems like a pretty healthy breakfast, but it is primarily carbohydrates, right? Even though it's fruit, it's mostly carbs. You're going to have, you're going to spike your blood sugar. You're going to release insulin. And at that time, insulin, you know, goes out, it sort of picks up all the blood sugar floating around in your blood and it has to go somewhere. Um, it's got to be stored. So where is it going to be stored? Well, some, you know, may go to your muscles, especially if you worked out in the morning or something like that, um, could go to your liver, but those stores are pretty small and the remaining is going to go to your fat stores. And then what happens is, is so, every, you know, the blood, it goes somewhere. It's going to go to your fat stores. It's going to go to your liver. It's going to go to your muscles. And then you experience a drop in blood sugar, right? So it, it spikes in the morning and then it drops. And can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah. And then it drops and then it's going to send a signal to your brain saying like, oh, we need more sugar because your blood sugar is dropping. And then you're going to probably start craving more sugar. And then around 10 o'clock, you're like, oh, I'm kind of hungry. Well, I already ate breakfast. But and you start thinking about lunch and you're like, well, what do I want for lunch? Well, the salad that you brought doesn't sound good anymore because you're starving. <laughs> um, and so, you know, you order a burger or you, you know, grab 10 handfuls of pretzels at work or, or whatever. And, and then you have experienced another blood sugar spike and then you release more insulin and that insulin is then going to, you know, take the blood sugar and, and convert it into fat. And you're just kind of going all day long doing this. Um, so I always like to say, you know, it, it, I think it starts a lot of times at breakfast is really making sure like that is the most, I'm going to go back and say the breakfast is the most important meal of the day. If you eat it only because not because you need to eat cereal only because that really sets the tone for your yeah. blood sugar, you know, and, and, and how, how you're going to respond and how your body's going to respond all day long. Yes. And I think it's just going to immediately, like if you go and start your day with a donut or a donut, you're going to be craving sugar all day long. Like yes. even outside of the insulin connection, it's just the more sugar you eat, it creates a dopamine response in our brain and the more sugar we want to eat which is huge. And that's one of the things like the SAD or the standard American diet, you look at a lot of Americans consume 75 grams of sugar per day. And that's just like normal, it's just in eating. And it just blows my mind how much sugar. Um, so a lot of people right now are stuck, trapped inside, like the rest of the world right now. And so a lot of people are having questions like, what do some easy meals? So like we know now what protein, healthy fat fiber look like. What are some examples of pairing this together that they can kind of take home in this craziness? Yeah. So first of all, I want to say that I know a lot of people, everyone's different depending on where you're at in the country. Uh, a lot of us are, are lacking a little on the proteins right now. I actually did an Instacart order yesterday and the person texted me and was like, we're out of meat. <laughs> like in general, like there's no protein here. <laughs> um, so if that's the case, yeah. And if you guys are, are, if you waited too long to go to the store, like I did, this is sort of a situation where you just do your best. Uh, I have a lot of people texting and, you know, freaking out, like, I don't have any protein. What do I do? <laughs> it's okay. Um, and at a time like that, you want to focus more on, you know, healthy fats, lots of vegetables. Keep, you know, you, obviously it's okay to have carbs. It's okay to have, you know, bread and pasta if you're hungry and you, <laughs> it's all you have. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, keep it, stick to like one serving at a meal and make sure you're filling up on lots of healthy fats like avocado, um, nuts, healthy oils like avocado oil, uh, coconut oil, olive oil, and, um, you know, fiber vegetables. Uh, as far as proteins go, you know, or, or meals like lunch and dinner, let's say. What I want you guys to do is go, just go take inventory on what you have right now, like, Proteins being obviously chicken, beef, eggs, pork, fish, 
um, uh, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese. I'm probably missing some, but uh, you know, take take those. You know, write all down all the proteins that you have. Write down all the vegetables and and you know carbohydrates that you have. Uh, like carbohydrates, meaning like sweet potatoes or lentils or like lentil pasta, chickpea pasta, things that are a little higher in fiber. And then, you know, make a list of what fats you have and start looking at that. I, really, if you do this and you start looking, you can start combining things. Um, I've had people tag me in like these hodgepodge meals that actually look great over the last couple of days, like lentil pasta mixed with, you know, some sort of olive oil dressing that they've made and broccoli. Um, and, and lentils are also a good source of protein. So you've got a little protein in there, even if you don't have meat, um, you can do, you can do like breakfast for dinner. You can do, you know, eggs with avocado and spinach or vegetables. Um, what else, what are some other really easy ones that I've been doing even, um, so I had a lot of, I had a lot of tuna in my pantry. So I've been having tuna salad with, you know, healthy mayo or mixed with some avocado for healthy fats. And then I always have wasa crackers, but you know, you could use sliced veggies or whatever to eat with mm -hmm. salad or your egg salad or so. Um, I actually just posted, if anybody, anybody's watching, go to my, uh, go to my Instagram and I made a diagram with like all proteins and healthy fats and fibers. And so you can kind of see if you're not as familiar with, you know, what goes in what category and you can, it's just a few posts back and that should help. And I've been making like bulk chia seed puddings. I, yeah. I had like so much chia seed in the fridge, I mean, in the pantry and I had so much protein powder and like just yeah. all these massive amounts of things. So I literally like did like a grocery store breakfast bowl where I put like chia seed pudding, sliced almonds, um, protein powder, cinnamon. We had some blueberries. Like I literally threw everything in there and then just put it in the fridge overnight. And it's been yeah. my breakfast and it's been great. I was going to say, uh, you know, lunch and dinner might be a little more challenging, but if you can stick to your breakfast, because your, your breakfast should mostly be in your pantry. If you've got chia seeds or flax seeds or anything like that, you can make a good smoothie with some healthy fat, um, like a nut butter or coconut oil or a half of an avocado. And then if you've got some protein powder or collagen, you can mix that in there. So I've been doing like protein coffee and loading that up, um, with, uh, like MCT oil and, and collagen and so F factor you posted about that's yeah. the protein you've been doing now with fiber and the protein. So it's got a ton of fiber in it. Uh, I, it's really sweet. So I don't always love it, but this week it's been great because it's really filling. So I'm like, I just need something that's like the chia pudding is a great idea. Or um, another option is this could also be a time to work on doing some fasting. If that's something that, would serve you. Um, and you know, we can talk a little bit about that. I don't always recommend long fasts, especially for women, but if it's, you know, if it's something that you wanted to try out and see how you feel, you know, doing like a 14 hour fast or going a little bit longer, um, yeah. this could be a, this could be a decent time to do it when you're <laughs> um, yeah. at home. And especially cause people are doing more like 20, 30 minute workouts at home and they're not maybe going to the gym for like their core strength training. And so you know that I'm like a huge proponent of Prolon. Megan's heard me talk about it like a million times. But I was actually gonna say now I bet like get a box of Prolon too and you're stuck inside, do five days of fasting. It's got all of the food that you eat for five days. Erin yeah. who's in the group, I think um, she just finished it and she had, and she's already a tiny thing. Sorry, Erin, I'm talking about you in here. Um, but she lost 4% body fat in the five days. Wow. I'll have her confirm, but yeah, it's amazing. But even if you don't do pro one, I do think there is a lot to females fasting. And this is something Megan and I talk about a lot is, okay, well, like how long is too long for females? And it really varies depending on the female. Like I know for me, I feel better having a really good breakfast, a good lunch and like a early, early snack and even skipping like a dinner so that I have at least four or five hours before I go to bed. Like that's when I wake up feeling the best because I've digested before I go to sleep. And I just think it's amazing. Do you do morning or do you do night or have you experimented both ways? So I'm, I, and honestly, I don't know if this is just because I grew up always having a bedtime snack and it's really, it's hard. It's like really hard for me to, to eat earlier. I, I don't know if I just, it's in my head, honestly, but I've tried to do the earlier 
fast um, and, and go several hours and then go to bed and I'm always hungry. So, but I do actually think that that is the better route to go. I, I, I really honestly do because otherwise you're up and you're, you're doing, you know, you're up, you're really active in the morning, you're doing a lot. Um, and I think it can be a little more stressful on your system to do it that way. Whereas at night, like you said, you have all these digestive hours where you're just like relaxing and then sleeping. And um, so I wish I was good at it. But <laughs> you also stay up a lot later. Like, I, I don't know if you're still the same with Julie, but Megan, like you used to work like late at night and you would knock things out. And I'm like, holy smokes, how is your mind working? So maybe yeah. you need that fact. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> probably I do go to bed earlier now, but even so, it just doesn't seem to work that well for me. Um, but I also can't fast very long. Like I, yep. 14 hours is tough for me. So, yep. you know, but that, that you just have to know that about yourself. And that's where paying attention matters. I can't tell you how many times I've met with people and they do some trend or they're, you know, following some program and they feel horrible yeah. and they think it's just like part of the process. And my perspective is like when you implement new things, like if you're cutting out sugar, you may have a few days where you feel bad, expect that. But other than that, you shouldn't feel terrible when you do something healthy for no. yourself. So, no. uh, just a side note. Um, some people had questions, and I don't know if it's more related to coronavirus or long term, but like thoughts on freezer meals. Are there any that you actually recommend or you would back, or how do you feel about those? Talking about freezing meals, <laughs> freezer meals. I think she just froze. Megan. I wonder if she knows she's frozen. Man, I shouldn't have brought up the freezer meals. Just like cut her off. While she's like reloading to some questions about freezer meals, I actually had to get some because they were out of everything when I went to the grocery store on Sunday to um, get food for the week. So I personally, I think that it's better not to do freezer meals whenever possible. There's a lot more pre-made food. So some of my favorite things um, is, is it, um, I, the name is so stupid by the way, and I'm sorry if anybody here is associated with the company and is hearing me say this, but Eat Clean Bro is a good company that does pre-made foods. Freshly is a good company. Um, fresh and Lean, they're another company that does like fresh meals that they deliver to you. And you can actually take those and put them in the freezer. And they're just a little fresher. Um, certain meals like Nourish, which is a local company, if you live in Atlanta, they try to use Atlanta farmers, local produce um, that they put into their meals when they deliver them. So Aaron asked me about freezer meals. I look at Eat Clean Bro, Freshly, Fresh and Lean, um, any of those, but I did at the grocery store this time. I had to buy some Amy's meals. Um, they're organic. They're full of whole food ingredients. When you look at the nutrition list, you're able to pronounce everything in the food. So I don't think those are bad for a pinch um, right now, like we're in. And it looks like Megan's back in with us. Hey. I brought I brought Sorry our about that. meals and I just like froze you. Yeah, it was my, um, like my internet just went out completely. So that's cool. I'll have to check on that later. But um, so what are your thoughts on your meals? I just gave on what meals? Uh, frozen meals. Well, it depends. I mean, um, for the most part, there's very, let me just say there's, there's very few good frozen meals. Um, most of them are filled with sodium and chemicals and you just have to really be careful. Even if you're shopping at Trader Joe's, like everyone thinks if they buy a frozen meal at Trader Joe's that it's healthy. That is so not the case. <laughs> I actually just bought a bunch of stuff for Andy from Trader Joe's and I got it home and looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, even Whole Foods, like you gotta be really careful. I, do you, Kristen, do you have any like good frozen? So what I said was I really prefer things like Eat Clean Grow, Freshly, Fresh and Lean, some of those meals that they deliver nourish, that yes. they deliver to you and then you can put in the freezer. Um, but I, when I went to the store, they had no protein, no meals for me at all. Like I went with you on Sunday trying to get food and they were like out of everything. So Cam and I got some of the Amy's meals, which 
normally is not ideal um, to me. I I'd, I'd prefer to like cook something, but they were organic. They're ingredients I can pronounce. Higher sodium yeah. than I normally cook with, but at least they have some protein. They have some fiber. They have some fats, and there's something in this coronavirus crisis that we're in. So they replaced all of our fresh meat um, for the time being. <laughs> Yeah. So. Honestly, I, 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 it's hard for me to even answer that question because I, I just don't buy it for myself normally. Um, yeah. But I would just say, a um, general rule of thumb, like, take a look at the ingredients, and if you're like, whoa, if you have that reaction, it's probably not good. <laughs> and just look locally because there's so many farm to table services now. You do pay a little bit more, but like some of them, when I've done them, like Nourish, they're like eight to eleven dollars per meal. And if you went, that's not bad at all. You would spend a lot more, and then they come. Um, not frozen, but you can always move them to the freezer and then pull them out and they will source where it's from, from local farmers and things. So um, I think that's great. And then once we get through all of this, I always think cooking services like garnish and gather and things like that. If you're so new to like cooking and preparing food. And that's one of the reasons why I love Megan is because her meals are like, you're going to have it done in like 15 minutes. Like she's like very point of like simple and you have a lot of meal plans that people can purchase from you. Right. Like if people want yeah. more. Yeah, a ton. And I'm actually, we're working on um, spring meal plan, which is going to come out probably in a week or two. Um, we're trying to get it done pretty quickly because a lot of people are stuck at home and we're doing a, just really simple stuff. Like, yeah. you know, people think they have to use a whole fancy recipe for a meal. Some of the, I'll, I mean, I'll just share like one of the recipes, which is amazing. I've been making it all the time is I'll just cook up um, some like cauliflower rice and frozen broccoli add a can of full fat coconut milk and then dump in a bunch of rotisserie chicken mm. or any, you know, any kind of chicken that you have. And that's yeah. it. And, and season it, you know, salt, pepper, garlic powder, whatever you like. It's Amazing. so delicious. My yeah. mom bought yeah. your single plan and she did one of, I think you had like a spaghetti squash in there on your last one. I don't remember what she said it was mixed with, but it was something okay. I never heard mixed together and she just like loved it. I don't even know now. I can't remember. I get them all mixed up, but who knows? Yeah. Well, if she's in here, she'll comment on there with what it was. Okay. But it was, yeah, it, she really loved it. And I have a spaghetti squash in the fridge. So I'm like, I'm going to make it. Yeah. Um, okay. So another question that people have is a lot of people in here are doing strength training. And I love the whole movement of really working on being fit and strong and not just skinny, which I think is really yeah. exciting um, because we know there's skinny fat and you can have high insulin and inflammation and all these issues internally and still look very small. Um, yes. So when we talk about food, I think there are some misconceptions about how much protein people need to maintain muscle mass. Um, so anything like when you're talking about the 20 grams per meal, anything you would change with somebody that's really doing more strength training. And I know it's so individuals with actual macronutrients, but do you think they need to do protein shakes in between all meals and really increase up their protein to build muscle mass? No, I mean, I, I do think you need, you do need more protein, but you don't need as much protein as you're being told you need. As a matter of fact, you know, if you're really trying to actually put on muscle, like if you want to gain muscle, I think carbohydrates are more important. Um, not an excessive amount of carbohydrates, but, you know, building in 25 grams or so of carbohydrates, maybe before and after your workout to make sure that you're, you know, actually building your muscle, replacing your glycogen, building your muscle. That's more important than, you know, squeezing in protein shakes between every meal. Yeah. So, you know, I usually tell people, and again, this is individualized because it kind of depends on how big the person, it depends on a lot of things, but you know, if, if you take your body weight, or I would say, I'm trying to use a different term in, in school, we use the term ideal body weight, but let's just say, you know, if you, if you weigh 150 pounds and you're, you feel your best at 125, use 125 and get about 125 grams of protein a day. That, that is kind of a lot, but it's not when I'm seeing people that are, you know, using the macro calculators online and they're like, oh, I need 150, 160 grams a day. That is totally unnecessary. Any Anything extra, you're just going to pee out. Yeah. Um, if you want to get like really into it, you can think more in terms of what your lean body mass is. So for example, this is what I always tell people to do. Um, if you 
you can actually look up online like what it looks like to have a certain percentage of body fat or even better get your body fat tested it may not be completely accurate but it can be close and if you know okay i'm about 30 percent body fat you can subtract that from your weight and get your actual lean muscle mass and then once you have that you can use that to determine how much protein you need so let's say again you're 150 pounds um i'm not going to do math but you you determine that you're you know, you have a hundred pounds of lean body mass, then a hundred, you, you know, you should shoot for about a hundred grams a day. Does that make sense? Yes. And if you do the body composition scan at stat, it will tell you how much lean. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, and which is, which is more, way more accurate than trying to look up, you know, <laughs> what your body looks like and <laughs> or even the, uh, what do you call it? What were those called? The, the, the Oh, the skin pinch test. Yeah, where they pinch you. That's what we oh, always about school too. Yeah, no, this is much more accurate. Um, okay, my mom answered. She did spaghetti squash, rotisserie chicken, coconut milk, and lemon pepper mint flakes, pepper flakes, butter, and Parmesan cheese. Yep. That's she said one. it was awesome. Yeah. Really, so, really way good. to go. Way to go. You told my mom. Um, okay, and so then some things I wanted to do. Oh, uh, calipers. Uh, the, skin, the skin test. That's what she's talking about. Oh, for some reason, can you say that again, Angela? Angela, which part did you want to hear again about the eating the protein for your lean muscle mass or the recipe with the spaghetti squash? We'll see what Angela wants to hear more. Um, Angela's in Seattle, she told us earlier. So it's like ghost town there. Probably even yeah. more so than Atlanta. Oh, probably a lot more, yeah. Um, okay. So, and then a lot of people wanted to hear well, two things that people were asking and we kind of already touched on with the protein, healthy fat fiber, but they wanted to know an idea of like a healthy protein. So what are some things that you put in your protein shakes? I'm really into collagen right now, just because I think it has kind of a dual purpose. Um, it's great for our joints. It's good for your gut. Um, and typically a, a lot of the more reputable collagen brands they don't have a bunch of junk added to them and so usually i just think it's easier to kind of pick out a good collagen whereas with protein powders you're having to read the ingredients and make sure there's nothing weird in it um i have been really liking the f factor protein it's dairy so you have to make sure that you can consume dairy but it's organic dairy um and it has fiber added to it i can't remember what it's a prebiotic fiber that's added i don't remember right now um, and stevia and like, that's about it. I mean, it's, it's really basic and it's really filling. It's really good. What else do I like? Um, I love further food collagen. I actually use their, their chocolate collagen and I'm not even a chocolate person, but it is so good. I put it in my coffee every day. I haven't tried um, their chocolate. Oh my God. It's so good. It's like, it's not sweet. It's like subtly sweet, but it's really just a good chocolate flavor, you know? Um, and I think it's got, it's got a reishi mushroom blend in it too. Mm -hmm. um, what else do I use? What do you put in for fiber? Is that um, in collagen or do you? I, so I like to use either acacia fiber or I've been using inulin fiber um, every once in a while too. Sometimes when you start to add that fi like a bunch of stuff to it, the coffee gets kind of, there's just too much and you, you don't taste the coffee anymore. But that's why I like the F factor protein because it just, it, it doesn't add any like thickness to it. It's yep. just got the straight fiber in it. What if you're going to make like a whole smoothie, like as a meal, like not the protein coffee, do you put fruit in it or do you try to avoid fruit in your smoothie? I, I usually do fruit in it. It just kind of depends on um, if I'm, if I'm adding fruit, I'm adding just like a handful, no more than a half a cup. And I'm usually using berries, um, something that doesn't have, that has a really low sugar impact and, uh, you know, a lot more fiber in it. So raspberries, blackberries are probably my favorite. Um, otherwise, you know, it's a half a banana or just a handful of some other kind of fruit. Um, I'm always loading it up with a ton of fiber. So chia seeds, a tablespoon or two, usually like two tablespoons of chia seeds, or I might do a tablespoon of chia seeds and a tablespoon of acacia fiber if I don't want to do too many chia seeds. Um, protein. I'm trying to think of what my other favorite protein brands are. I uh, Primal Kitchen is a good one. Um, you know, they're a collagen protein, but I'll do a scoop or two. Usually I'll try to get at least 20 grams of protein in um, 
from my from the actual protein powder and then some sort of unsweetened nut milk i usually try to add greens in if i have greens they're gonna go in there handful or two have you done frozen cauliflower yet yeah which is great you don't taste it at all and it makes it so smooth yeah it does i haven't really played around with navy beans yet have you done navy beans? no no i'm not a big be i mean to me because that's going to add carbs and if i'm going to have a smoothie i'm not going to add a lot of carbs you know you'll get it from the small amounts of fruit yeah yeah and then um, healthy fat so i like nut butter i like nut butter more than adding like coconut oil because or like half of an avocado because if it, nut butters and avocado both also have um some fiber in it and then the nut butter also has protein so to me they're just it, it just makes the smoothie a lot more filling yep yep i totally agree and at kia said we should embrace fruit and i agree that fruit is so good for you i think what megan's trying to do with her smoothies is keep it not too fruit heavy so that it keeps you full for four hours uh, yeah. satisfied yeah, and, and you know, sometimes a little tip if you kind of overindulge the night before, like you go out, you're drinking, or you have a huge dinner filled with pasta, it is kind of nice the next day to just really calm down your blood sugar levels and your cravings. A lot of times in the morning, you know, you'll notice you wake up after you have a big pasta dinner and you're like, you're starving and you're craving carbs and you want to go have pancakes. That's totally normal. That's just because your blood sugar is, it was on a roller coaster last night and now it's, you know, it's coming down and like we talked about earlier it's kind of signaling to your brain like oh we need more sugar feed me so at that point it's a really good idea to maybe skip the fruit and just like even that blood sugar back out so that the rest of the day you feel good yes yes and i think i just talk to some of my patients sometimes and when they make a smoothie i'm like well what are you putting in and sometimes they're like well i put a handful of pineapple i put a handful of mango i put a banana i put five yeah. strawberries you know, and the question I always ask, well, would you sit down and would you eat that fruit at one time? Like, is it like a serving of fruit or yeah. you it up, it gets to such a small amount where some people don't even realize that that smoothie had 80 grams of sugar. Like a lot of the acacia bowls, when you go out to get those, oh my God. Um, a lot of antioxidants, but they're like 60, 70 grams of sugar in a bowl. Yeah. Um, and it's going to spike your blood sugar and drop it and you're going to be hungry again soon. So and you know, everybody, I always say to you that everybody's different with what blood sugar they can tolerate. Sometimes if you are an athlete and you are like running marathons or you're getting a lot of workouts in. Totally. You need a, you need it. Yep. And then a lot of yep. us are not doing that much activity. Like I used to run marathons and I needed more carbs. Now I'm running a business and I sit a lot more. I try to stand when I can, but I don't need as many carbs. I don't need all that energy. So I always say too that like this is general advice it's not individualized per person based on activity level and all of that um so yeah and sometimes too kristen you know i'll find in um metabolism makeover you know someone even if they're not a marathon runner or a bodybuilder or whatever they'll come in and they'll be like after two weeks say i'm still feeling terrible not eating as many carbs then you probably need them at that point. You know, like you said, it's normal for a couple of days to not feel super great if you're coming off of if you're coming off a diet where you're eating a ton of carbs and sugar. But after a couple of weeks, like you you should be feeling great. And if you're not, then your body just needs more carbs. Yeah. You and know? we're all different. And one of the things that like I personally and I always I think I've talked about this on some of the other webinars, but I did ketogenic diet just because I tried to do what a lot of my patients do yeah. to experience I did it. Too. Yeah. And I had so many patients that had amazing results. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to do keto. I'm going to feel so good. My brain's going to be on fire, you know, all this yeah. stuff. Well, I felt horrible. Like I was so yeah. tired. My husband had to kick me out of bed in the morning. I literally couldn't even do vertical jumps. I couldn't go for a jog. And I stuck it out for like four weeks to see if my body would become fat adapt. Yeah. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, you were miserable. You were like, nope. <laughs> yeah. And I just, and then I did genetic testing. So I did a swab and they looked at my genetics and they say, you know, based on my body type and based on my hormones and my genetics, I really shouldn't drop below 150 grams of carbs. And when I stay at like 150 grams, like I feel much better. Um, so, you know, again, just that individualized approach. Yep. Yep. And, you know, not everyone can afford or have the, has the resources to do be a human guinea pig like you are. <laughs> but that's okay. You can still, I feel like we're always looking for someone else to tell us the answer. 
Like, what do I need? Well, you know, and, and that's the same thing that happens. I'm putting together a, um, a webinar right now about my fitness pal and like how to break up with it. Um, because you put your height and weight and activity level in and all of a sudden it's telling you how many carbs and how many, how much protein your body needs. And it's like, that's, that no, <laughs> you have to really do the work. And, you know, going back to metabolism makeover, it, it's something again, that people always say, are you going to tell me exactly how much of each macronutrient to have? And I say, no, you get a base meal plan. It's like 1200 calories, which is too low. So I'm just going to, you know, I tell people that I'm like, it's too low for, for 90% of you, it's too low. And this is how you're going to build on it. Like, you're going to see how you feel. If you get hungry at three hours after lunch, then you need to add another serving of fat. If you are, you know, a, over five, eight, like you probably are just going to automatically need an extra ounce of protein, or if you're doing this or that. So we have these guidelines that help you sort of build it yourself. And I think that really empowers people and nobody likes it at first. Cause they're like, no, I want you to tell me what to eat. But then by the end, they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is the first time I've ever really tuned into my body and figured out what I actually individually need. And I think that's so just even getting onto the most basic level that you said, like, okay, you ate a meal. How quickly were you hungry? Like actually paying attention. Like, am I truly hungry? Am I just wanting to mindlessly snack? Am I just thirsty? Like what is going on? And if am you I are hungry just because it's 3 PM, like, yeah. <laughs> it just, yeah. yeah. And that's like a big thing people were talking about earlier is that the mind, the mindless eating is going rampant for a lot of people that are stuck at home. They're just snacking all day. Um, so hopefully if you guys take some of these protein, healthy fat, fiber tips and really make your meals more substantial and see, okay, if you're not hung, if you're hungry again before four hours, maybe you need to add some fat or protein to that meal to see. Um, and Alex had some questions. Should I turn to carbs when I feel really energy levels after upping my exercise levels? Alex, are you saying when you feel your energy going down after increasing your exercise, or are you saying when you're feeling high energy levels? Um, and then she asked that I recently heard on a science podcast that keto is especially a bad idea while we were talking about higher levels of cold, flu, COVID, et cetera. Um, so for my body on keto, my immune system is definitely not as strong. So keto would have been horrible for me this time of year. Um, but I do know some people that are really fat adaptive and they feel amazing. And yeah. I don't think it impacts their immune system the same way as it impacted mine. What is your thoughts on that? I, I, I honestly have no idea. Um, I, I had not heard that. I, I'm going to agree with you probably though, just that it's going to depend on the person. The thing is to me, your immune system is based mostly in your gut. So yes, that has a lot to do with your diet, but I wouldn't necessarily say like keto is bad for your immune system. I would say, what's your gut look like? Like, are you eating, are you eating cream cheese and bacon or are you eating like, you know, lots of really strong, healthy fats, lots of good prebiotic fibers. Are you taking your probiotics? Are you taking glutamine? Are you taking your enzymes? Like that's more the direction I would go in. And I think two things to bounce off that is that when you do keto, a lot of people naturally drop their fiber down to like five grams of fiber. So you can do keto and add fiber supplements, which is gonna feed the good bacteria in your diet and help with your immune system. So I think that's a huge like caveat to the keto. Um, and then the other thing like on a positive note is we know sugar decreases your immune system. So even if yes. you're not keto, just not eating high sugar is going to be really helpful for your immune system. Yeah. Um, I was watching, um, I just wanted to say now, regardless of your political affiliation, I was watching Bill Maher and he said something that really stood out to me this week. He was like, it, it, you know, your immune system, like no one, no one really talks about this. He said, I never get sick. I never go to a doctor. And they're like, what do you do? What supplements do you take? What do you do? And he's like, I sleep, I don't have stress and I don't eat sugar. The three S's. And I'm like, wow, like, you're right. That's so it. Like, those are the three things that you've really got to pay attention to. And those are the three things too, that impact your gut the most. Exactly. Like you can't take enough zinc, vitamin D and vitamin C to outweigh no, no hydration, super stressed no. lifestyle and not sleeping. So I think that's huge. Um, and then Alex was saying, yes, low energy um, after upping her exercise. Should she eat more carbs? Probably I would, I would want to look at your full diet. I mean, are you eating enough protein too? Um, how much, how many carbs are you eating in, 
total. Here's what I would say. Um, if you are doing a lot of heavy weight lifting, like you're tearing muscles down, if you are doing like high intensity training, like, um, you know, hour long spin classes, or you're, you know, you're, you're burning a lot of calories, you're, you're running through a lot of energy um, in a workout, you, you do want to make sure you're supporting that with carbohydrates. And so you'll probably want to add some carbs before and after the workout. Um, you know, I have people that come to me and say like, well, what about bar class? Like, do I need carbs after a bar class? Probably not. Like as a general rule, like you're not, you're not burning through glycogen, you know, during a bar class, but yeah, if you're doing anything that I just mentioned, you, you do probably need more carbs and you want to do them more around your workout than, um, then, you know, like early in the morning and then working out late in the afternoon. How many carbs would you say? I usually say, you know, it depends on your body weight and what you're doing, but like 25 to 50 extra grams of carbs. What does 25, like, what would that look like? 25 grams? Um, yeah. So like a banana. Okay. Um, a, um, a piece of, you know, whole grain bread, um, a, a two thirds of a cup of rice. Um, I'm giving things that aren't like super um, nutrient dense, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, if you're literally just replacing your glycogen stores, um, it's okay to just have some straight carbohydrates. So yeah, like two thirds of a cup of some sort of grain um, would be like between 25 and 30 grams or a large piece of fruit. And when I used to work out like really religiously and hard, I would even do like two dates dipped in almond butter. And oh, I just that's a great idea. do the fat before workout. For me, it never bothered me. But you could always try, um, Alex, adding in like one or two dates before your workout or after your workout and just see if that, because dates are actually a really high glycemic index food and they will get your blood sugar up quickly. Um, so yeah. yeah, that's definitely a time where it's okay to have some of these higher glycemic foods because it's just going to be like really readily available sugar for you. And we talked about spiking your blood sugar earlier. That's not really going to be the case. Like you you have something like that before a workout, you're going to, you're burning through that during the workout. Yes. And I always like to say, and that's why I wanted you to say like what 25 grams looks like. Cause I know a lot of people like before even running a marathon, they're eating like a pasta bowl, like this big, you know, and like carb loading. Yeah. And, and like, no, like really you don't need an even marathon's a little bit different than just going for an hour workout, but yeah. 25 grams of carbs adds up quickly. Like this is a small thing um that can make a big difference. But um, I also want to say quickly too that if you are doing something like you are training for a marathon and you're regularly doing these really long runs, be very cautious of that and and, and with re carb reduction um you you need like you might need to have a minimum of 50 grams of carbs before or after maybe oh, yeah. even both and during like if you're running and during and miles. during yeah. yeah i mean um, oh, yeah. there's there's a lot of great resources out there you know how many carbs you actually need during you know when you're training for something like that and it's no joke. I mean, I have people all the time that come to me. They're like, I'm intermittent fasting and then I'm marathon training. And then I'm, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> they're poor and and this is why you're holding on to weight. And this is why you have no energy because yeah. And I'm doing a talk on Thursday night on adrenals, which we're going to be talking about that because that intermittent fasting and this high intensity cardio, and then they're drinking coffee on top of it. Like yeah. our adrenals take a beating. Um, yeah. and Alex, just like, you know, the genetic test I did, we do it at stat. It's called, um, my origin and it's a swab. So 23 and me looks at a lot of really good genes, but it won't give you that kind of plan of care based on your genetic makeup. If anybody's interested. Um, and we've got about, uh, nine more minutes. So people are asking, okay, should you adjust your macros based on the workout you're doing that day? If you run one day versus doing strength. Would you change your macros? So again, I would say if I was doing like a heavy weight workout, now this is not a bar class. This is like, I'm going to strength, the strength class at, at stat. Um, I would add some carbohydrates around that. If I'm, if I'm trying to um, actually, you know, put on some muscle um, or even maintain it, I would add probably 25 grams of carbs. Like me personally, I can tell you I weigh, you know, 135 pounds, maybe. I'm <laughs> losing my baby weight. So. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm weighing like 135 pounds. I'd probably do that. If I weigh 200 pounds, I'd probably, you know, do more like 
50 grams. Um, it just kind of depends, but somewhere around there. Um, if I'm going on a 30 minute jog, no, I, I wouldn't change anything. If I'm doing 20 minutes of high intensity interval training, no, probably not. If I'm doing um, a 45 to 60 minute spin class where I'm like totally wasted by the end, yeah, I'm adding probably another, like I said, 25 or so grams of carbs after. Would you agree with that, Kristen? Would you say more? I mean, I'm I'm curious. What you think. Based on how you feel during your workouts, like if you feel like you get burned out sooner and you're, you know, it's it's very individualized. But the one thing I'll tell you is a lot of research now is coming out that carbs, yes, you need a timer on your workout, but protein's not the same. Protein, a lot of the research now is showing it's with what you're eating within 24 hours totally. of your yep. workout for building muscle. So you don't want to like not eat carbs all day, not eat protein all day, and then eat 30 grams after you strength train. Like you want to make yep. sure you're getting the protein over a 24 hour period. Over a, yep, over throughout the day. And that's also why it, like the just having a protein shake right after your workout. I mean, you see that everywhere. Like it's essential. You have to have a protein shake after your workout or you're not going to build muscle. And it's that is so far from the truth. <laughs> Yeah, especially if you're not eating good quality protein, fiber, fats throughout the day, yes. it doesn't matter what yes. you do right now. Yeah, after. I mean, if you're just having it as like a snack because you're hungry and your body needs it, great. But it's not like your workout was wasted because you didn't down a protein shake within, you know, 23 minutes after your yeah. workout. I know, I know. And um, Shayla's asking, is it okay to fast in the morning, workout, then have your first meal? Because she wakes up and does 5 a.m. strength training. Um, I'm going to say again, it depends on how you feel. Um, yep. Because what I find oftentimes is that when people do that, they get fatigued a lot earlier. And so you're not able to actually lift the weights that you want to. Um, and Krista, I don't know how you feel about this, but I've done, I've done research on this people in this space. And, you know, from people, from what I have read, taking amino acids before working out in the morning. Um, if you don't want to have like actual food, if you're fasting now there's it gets into like, is that, are you technically still fasting if you're consuming amino acids? Um, I, <laughs> it depends. I, I know this is like okay. such a, yeah, this is a whole nother topic, but having, you know, some branch chain amino acids, BCAAs before you work out can really help you get through your workout without actually consuming food. Um, yeah. So it's going to depend on how you feel. Yeah. And I think that's so true. And also to me, it depends on what is their fasting glucose and insulin when they wake up. Mm, I yeah. find that the lower people's glucose and insulin is in the morning, they will fatigue much quicker yep. than somebody that's actually like kind of common for America. They're waking up with a blood sugar at 85, 90, 95, 98. Maybe they're even. Then they can get through their workout if because they have it's on the shorter end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it really does depend. I don't think that there's a wrong answer if you're feeling good in your strength training, then that's good. Yeah. Um, you'll know. Yes. I mean, like, you know, if you need some carbs, your you're like, your body tells you. Yep. Oh, or my mind. My mind's like, please, I need some fuel. Um, yeah. And then um, Akia, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but she's wondering about some clean carbs. What are some of your clean go-to carbs? Yeah. I So I love to call them slow carbs. And these are just carbs that have additional protein fiber added to them so that they, uh, you know, we talked earlier, I said, when you wake up in the morning and you have a banana and a green juice, those are more simple carbs. They have sugars, even though they're healthy foods. Um, these are types of carbs that are going to spike your blood sugar really quickly. And then it's going to drop. And then, you know, you're going to crave more carbs again. Another carb like that would be like white rice or you know, white pasta, regular pasta, but slower carbs are going to have more fiber in them. And, um, they're going to release a lot slower and it's going to cause it, or it's going to, it's going to cause your, uh, insulin to release a lot slower because you're not having this like super fast blood sugar spike. So lentils, beans, um, and that includes like lentil pasta, chickpea pasta, things like that. Uh, wild rice is great. Um, brown rice, honestly, barely has any fiber. Um, I, I'm i such a brown rice hater. I think it's gross. And I'm like, if I want rice, I'm just going to have white because it doesn't have that much fiber in it. That's just me. Wild rice, though, is amazing. It has tons of fiber. Um, berries are a great option. Um, quinoa is, is decent. 
I'm probably missing a few, but if you look at a label and just see, you know, make sure it's got some fiber in it. Um, the more fiber that a, that a carbohydrate has, the slower it is. Yep. Yeah, I think that's... Potatoes. I always look like I don't eat a carb that doesn't have like five to 10 grams of fiber. So like even yeah. when I'm looking at like sprouted bread, I'm looking for like at least five grams of fiber. The bands that's of a great. rentals. Yep. Um, what about I forbidden? I say four, but I like five. So yeah, more of the better, more of the better, right? The more of the better always. Yeah. Um, and then Cheryl, the, my origin, I think the, my origin, the genetic testing is great for anybody, but the big key takeaway and why I don't like always go to my origin first is your genes have to be expressed. So just because you're genetically predisposed to something, it may not be the current picture. So it really varies. I think knowledge is power, but you have to use it as a tool and not like the Bible that you just, yeah. you know, do everything by. Um, I believe the cost is one ninety nine, and then 99 per added test after, because they have like a hormones, cardiometabolic, a few different things. Um, but you can always ask me, Cheryl, about that, um, and I can help give you more information. And then I think this will be maybe our last one, because I want to ask you one more question, is yeah. Lindsay said, how soon after the workout do you eat? I feel like we covered this a little bit. Um, do you have any other thoughts on that around workouts or do you think we covered it with the 25 grams? Yeah, I think so here's what I, so here's what I think about this. If, if you are going home to have a meal within like not, and again, we're talking, we are talking, you're, you're doing, um, you know, an intense like strength training workout where you're actually building muscle. You're at a strength class at stat or you're doing like a really high intensity class, like a boot camp. Um, but my, I think from the research that I've done within about 90 minutes, as long as you have something, you know, some sort of combination of, of protein, carbs, fat, you're good to go. Um, this could be your next meal, like very easily. And you don't have to have a post-workout snack, but if it's gonna be a while before your next meal and you're hungry, um, then you'll wanna have something, you know, within, within about 90 minutes. Yeah. But if you finish and you feel totally wasted, like I said, when I say wasted, you know what I mean? Like your body is wasted, not like you're <laughs> drinking, but you're like, Ugh, you know, you're dying. Then you probably need something quickly. Um, but I usually go by a 90 minute window. Okay. I think that's great. I completely agree. And I think it varies because sometimes if I do just cardio, I will, and I'm like hot, I really won't even be hungry for a yeah. couple hours and then I eat a really good meal. So I think it really just depends. Um, and then we didn't even get into the alcohol, which, um, okay, we a loving dietitian. we'll bring you back in. Cause I know you have another webinar to get to. I mean, I can, let me just touch on it quickly because I think it's really more simple than most people think. First of all, you guys, for the most part, we don't store alcohol as fat, like actual alcohol. Like if I'm sitting here drinking, you know, a vodka water, um, our bodies just don't really prefer to store it as fat. So a lot of people think that alcohol makes me fat. No, it's what you're drinking with it. So it's not j or eating or drinking. So it maybe it's you're having um, a wine that you bought at the gas station and <laughs> you know, it's a cheap wine. It is going to be filled with additives and sugar and junk. And all of that is getting filtered through um, not only our body. And if it's sugar, you know, we've already talked about sugar, how it spikes your blood sugar and it releases insulin and they can make you store fat. Um, but you're also going to be filtering a lot of toxins and, and really gross stuff from that cheap wine. Um, if you're drinking um, a margarita that is full of agave, like you're having a bunch of sugar with this alcohol. And the reason this is more impactful on your weight than just sitting down and having, you know, uh, I don't know, um, a, 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 let's say a mocktail that doesn't have alcohol is that your, your, your liver is having to filter that alcohol, which is of course poison. And when that happens, everything else kind of slows down. That's the easiest way for me to say it. Everything else slows down because your liver is is taking over. It's like, all right, we've got poison in the body. Everything else is on the back burner. We're going to filter this <laughs> out. Um, and so then things like your metabolism, which isn't really necessary to keep you alive. It's a nice thing to, you know, having a good metabolism is a nice thing to have, but it's not keeping you alive necessarily. That just sort of slows down. Uh, and that's a very non-scientific way to put it, but that's really essentially what's happening. So you really just want to be very careful about what you're consuming with alcohol. Yes. 
And I love the fact that it's a central nervous system depressant too. And it does have a role in slowing the metabolism. Cause I know Cameron, my husband, he started to only drink on the weekend and saw huge changes like with his body composition, his energy, yeah. his mood, just because of that central totally. nervous system depressant. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to finish by just letting us know if you have a favorite podcast book, um, just anything kind of inspirational, sure. people have a little bit more time on their hands now, any uh, parting tools for them when it comes to nutrition? Um, so th my favorite podcast, and this is really, this is more for business owners, but I will say I love James Wedmore because he is, he gives great business advice, but he's also very much, um, very in touch with, you know, the inner self and, and the soul mm -hmm. and, you know, bringing your soul really into your business and, um, it, that there's really, I, to me, it's just so different from any other sort of business podcast that's out there. So if you're a business owner, you should listen to it. I love it. Um, a couple of books that I always start people with that maybe start following me and, and say like, I want some more, I would need more information. The two most impactful books for me, or I would say the one is, um, it was called The Calorie Myth by Jonathan Baylor. It's so good. There's, it's a very, it's a lot of science, but it's, it's just amazing. I, I don't agree with necessarily everything. He's um, very strict, sort of in his diet, and like to me, it's not very sustainable. But ignore that and read the science if you are someone who still is a slave to calories, and it's just fascinating. Um, it totally changed my life several years ago when I read it. And it's how I really got so passionate about what I preach now. Um, so that's, that's it. Yeah. I also really love Body Love by Kelly Levesque. And we have super similar um, philosophies on nutrition. And so anyone who likes me, I, I know will like her. And I don't have a book. So if you have a book that you want to read, <laughs> she's got two of them now. Maybe you'll have a book one day. Yes, maybe I will. You need maybe to. Um, and you guys make sure to follow her. She's at the nutrition addiction. Um, if you didn't see it all over our Instagram, follow her on there. She's got her email. She puts out a lot of good content, a lot of free stuff. And then she also has meal plans you can buy that I highly recommend. I know my mom does too. She cooks them all the time at home. So she loves <laughs> Yeah, and you guys, I do have, I, um, I haven't announced it or put a link up yet, but I think I might tomorrow. I'm going to have um, a free webinar that I'm doing next week, like I said if you're someone who has really been sort of a slave to like calorie tracking apps or my fitness pal or things like that, we're going to talk about sort of how to, how to break up with that and how to really tune into your internal calorie counters, because you do have those. All of you do. Um, I love so that it's really it on your Instagram when you do it. Yeah. I'm going to, okay. um, I'm going to release it to my email list, but then I'm also going to be talking about it a lot on Instagram. So, okay. Good. I'll be tuning in. And then I put my email on there in case any of you guys have any further questions um, about any of the things we talked about, or if you want to do pro on during this coronavirus um, being trapped, reach out. <laughs> That's a great Thank idea. you so much, Megan. So much good information. And it was such a nice little break that we all needed from yes. the state. All right. Bye, Kristen. Thanks, right. guys. Bye. Bye.